In this video, I'm going to show you the best defense in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's YouTube video. Now, if you're brand new to the channel and you've never been a part of my channel, what I do here on YouTube is I break down how you can get better both on the offensive side of the ball and on the defensive side of the ball in Madden 21. So if you want to get better at the game, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I upload videos every single day. We do about eight of these videos that are designed to help you get better at the game. So if you want to get better, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We're going to jump right in here. Now, this is the best off or best defense um, in Madden 21, in particularly against Trips Tight End. A lot of people like to run this Trips Tight End offense. And so I'm just going to go through and share with you a couple of things. First and foremost, you want to put your curl flats on 25. It's probably the most important thing that you can do, either 20 or 25 yards. And then from there, option defense is going to be on conservative. Ball and air defense is going to be on play receiver. Auto alignments to default. And auto flip is going to be on. And the play that we're going to be going over is this Mike Blitz 3 uh, out of the 335 wide. Now, we're going to audible into this from the 335 normal so that we can get really good personnel on the field. Now, the, one of the tricks with running this defense is understanding exactly what these zones do against certain types of route combinations. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to come out, you're going to audible over to Mike Blitz, and you see here we're going to be able to basically give this core look against trips tight end. Now, if you notice, these purple zones are called seam flats. And so seam flat stands is, is kind of a specific type of zone that is going to play. So a lot of people like to throw streaks, right? You'll see a lot of people do this. So if I try to throw this vertical route, you see that the seam flat will kind of stay on him for a little bit of time. Now, the reason that that matters um, is because if you move these safeties down, and I like to move them kind of over the defensive end, you know, basically even with the outside linebacker or defensive end here, what you'll notice is if they try to go through that same process, you'll see that this streak is going to get intercepted or swatted pretty much every single time. They can't really throw those inside pass led streaks on you. Now, the beauty of this is also is true um, as far as the tight end is concerned. So if I audible over to Mike Blitz 3, you'll see once again, same kind of thing. And if I just bring this guy down right about here and bring this guy down right about here, that's going to help with the whole coverage of the play. And if I try to just throw this streak to the tight end, you see that it's going to be, I mean, it's, you can kind of fit it in there, but it's really a tight throw. Um, and what most people like to do is let's say that they're going to, you know, let's say that they're going to uh, take their tight end, they're going to put him on a streak. And then they might have like a corner route coming to the backside or something. What you'll notice is when you go to this Mike Blitz 3, the seam flats do a really, really good job of taking this away. So if I look here, if I try to throw this to the right, you see there's three or four people that are going to make a play on that football. So that's just a little bit about why the seam flats are so, so good because they stop both crossing routes and seam streaks, which is really, really good. Now, um, before we dive into anything else within this defense, I want to encourage you to go ahead and click the uh, subscribe subscribe button but I also wanted to let you know that if you want to get the full nickel 335 wide defense that link is in the description of this video so you can pick it up by clicking that link right there it's just 15 bucks gives you the best defense in the game and I promise you it's the best defense in the game so now I want to go through a couple of other things that people will do out of trips tight in and how you can kind of combat this um, defensively I want to talk to you about a man coverage I really really like out of this and I want to show you kind of how I like to do this. Now, one of the things that I like to do out of this is I actually like to run man, but you notice here that if you're on default, you notice that Jair Alexander is going to move to the left side, right? We don't want that to happen. We really want him to stay on the right side because now there's an obvious tell whether you're in man or you're in zone coverage. So if I man align, you see that it does that. If I base align, it does that. But if I unbase align, you see it does that. So really the only way around this is to truly base align my defense. And you see here here that Jair Alexander is going to be you know out here on the right side however what you'll notice is if I let's say that I man him up on the tight end and then I do it watch where he goes see how he still goes all the way over there to the left side so that's just something that you have to understand and you have to kind of monitor when you have your alignment this is the one issue that I can see happening is there's some alignment issues and there's some tells 
whether or not you're in man coverage or not. So really what I like to do is play man coverage on one side and zone coverage on the other side. So for example, what I would recommend doing, especially if you have like a tight end on this side of the field, if you take this outside corner and let's just say you put him into a zone, like a, a, a cloud flat or something like that, right? you see that he's going to be able to play that. If you unbase the line, you see that he's going to still continue to go. No matter what you do, he's going to always go that direction. So that's just something that you have to monitor and you have to be aware of that he's always going to basically do that. So you have to base align this defense for it to be effective. Now what you'll notice is, let's say I go to Mike Blitz 3. If I base align this, what you'll see really quickly here, especially if I move this ball uh, to the right side of the screen or to the right hash mark you're gonna see that this will create this look and this causes some some issues for your defense so again um, if I go to Mike Blitz 3 now if I base line and I press watch what happens here you see the corner on the right goes in the right spot but on the left side I can run a simple uh, little streak right here and have a pretty good shot at beating this over the top if I have a fast enough receiver the other thing that this causes is it for is it now forces me like let's say I run a want to run uh, some type of Tampa 2 this is much much more of an issue now when you have Tampa 2 you'll notice here that if Mike Evans is on a streak you see that right there he's wide open against Tampa 2 the other thing is once again this creates another tell so let's say I run man coverage watch the cornerback on the left side you see now if i'm in man coverage the cornerback is in the same vicinity so those are some tells as far as like alignment goes that really does matter when you're running this defense i did a whole video on alignment and talking about why that's significant and why that's important these are little things that most people don't realize but that are really vitally important so the best thing that i know how to do is simply this whenever you're setting your defense up Go ahead and call, like if you audible to man coverage, right, just grab him and just, just hold him right here. Just grab him and just hold him right here. And then all you're going to do, you see that he's still in man coverage on this on this guy here, circle. That's fine. What I like to do is just quickly make an adjustment um, and simply do that. That's it. That's the only adjustments that I make, and then I still bring these guys down if I have a time, if I have time in the pre-snap. But now what you'll notice is now we have a pretty decent um, we have a pretty decent chance uh, of making this happen so like if I base align this you see that see that now he can be in man coverage on the tight end and then if I unbase align it you see his man coverage goes to circle okay so that's just some things that you have to be aware of uh, when you're doing this so you know realistically like if you watch Mike Blitz 3 here watch that corner on the left side here you see that now if I man align him you see a move so those are little tells that are really, really important to understand. If I base the line and press here, the problem with doing that is I basically have to play cover three on the left side. If I don't base the line and press, now I can play you know pretty much anything I want. The problem with that is if I play man coverage, like let's say I go to Mike Blitz O, you see who he's in man, you see how the man coverages are messed up. So this is why trips tied in this part, in my opinion, really, really difficult to defend. However, like, cause, cause it could be as simple as this right here. If they streak Scotty Miller and then just pass lead him to the left, you see that's wide open if he's in man coverage. But we want to keep the same look because one of the biggest tips I can tell you ever about defense is to make everything look the same. So I like to audible to Mike Blitz O or Mike Blitz 3. And then from there, if I know that I'm going to audible again, I'll do this. Literally, I'll just hold him. I'll just bring him right over here. And when I do that, now I have some things that I have to make sure that I tend to. One of those is I will typically man this outside guy up on the running back, okay? And the reason why is because that's the least complicated thing. Now, watch what happens to the man assignments. Let's say that I motion. Uh, let's say that I motion over Chris Godwin on a drag. Watch what happens here. Watch. I'm just going to show the play art. You see that if that happens, you have to man the linebacker up on whoever was motioned, okay? That's really really important. Um, and so you might have to make an adjustment like like that right there. Right? You might have to do something like that. Those are some of the little advanced things that people miss and people don't really you know, understand. You might have to swing this guy out here you know, if they do something like that. So there's a lot of things that Trips Tight End does, and that's what makes it such a good offense to the alignment of your plays um, that really can give them an offense an advantage. That's also why, in my personal opinion, I would rather just play zone coverage 
And what I mean by just play zone coverage is another thing that I'll do from time to time is I might literally man up everybody in this zone coverage. So I might literally go through, man everybody up here, cross man the whole nine yards, but basically we're in a cover three shell and um, you know we're basically challenging the offense to beat our cover three shell, right? This is a very simple way to you know, really take care of a lot of what people like to do out of trips that in, in my opinion, because you have cross man everywhere, um, you're, you're able to, to kind of take away some of the crossing routes because that's what trips tight end does so well. So those are some ideas and things like that. But the other thing that you have to realize about this defense is it's very adaptable and very adjustable. Um, and so you can leverage, and this is when I say like swing defenders, this is an old term, but Basically, you want to leverage these linebackers. You can do a lot of different things with them. For example, let's say that you wanted to send pressure off of the right edge here, right? What I could simply do is I could take that, I could run a cover three like that, and then I could do something like to this effect right here, and I'm still in cover three. At the snap of the ball, I'm just going to run out here, and you see I'm going to get pretty good pressure off that left edge. Those are some little pro tips that you could use with this defense. But at the core, the easiest way to run this defense, in my opinion, is to simply do this right here. If you want to play trips tight end, this is what I would recommend. Um, you definitely want to have your seam flats, at least on, in my opinion. You, you really do want to have those. So I like to double flat both sides here. But an, another thing that you could do if you wanted to is you could do some man coverage. So, uh, for example, I'll man up the running back and I'll man up whoever I think might go on the you know on the on the flat route so that might be this triangle receiver right here or i could f double flat them or i could do something like that right there this defense right here i think is really good for what people like to do out of this formation um, it gets you another yellow on the field um, and, and then that outside third does typically a good job against corner routes and you're able to use her over the middle so that's a little bit about nickel 335 um, as far as the alignment goes and some of the things that you need to watch out for, um, I think these seam flats are truly the best defense, the best zone coverage in the game. Don't ever, you know, not, you know, again, trip side in is going to motion people. You can almost guarantee, um, you can literally almost guarantee that they're going to put people in motion. Um, that's part of what makes trip side in so good is the fact that they can do that. So you got to fully expect that that's going to happen. The question is, how do you respond when it happens? When they motion people, you know, what do you do? So, like, if they motion Scotty Miller, what's your plan? Most people don't think about that, but what I like, that's why I also like to individually man people up because when you individually man people up, they don't move, they don't switch and glitch out. So, that's why I personally would rather just sit in zone all game, but and, and just kind of play chess with my opponent, you know, call man in certain situations, obviously. But, anyways, guys, that is the. Uh, the 335 wide, a little bit about alignment, a little bit about how to run it against trips tight end. I think trips tight end gives it the most amount of issues, uh, at least that I've seen so far. So, anyways, guys, if you want to get more uh, of this defense, you really want to get the full scheme. I have completely bagged trips tight end, bunch, bunch tight end, all of the meta offenses with this defense. The link is in the description of this video if you want to pick it up. Also, if you want to get a free sample of the defense, go ahead and shoot me a text message. My number is 812. 216-3644. You can hit me up via text message. You can get a free sample of this. You can also get other defenses and other offenses. I release a new one every single week uh, in my text message membership. So make sure to subscribe to, or make sure to text me so that you can get that those videos. And that is my personal cell phone number. It's not anything automated or anything like that. Every message you get will always be directly from me. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to text me if you have any questions. And if you want to get the full defense, that link is in the description of this video.